typically when using Arch Linux, I and most people are going to install the Linux kernel. What I mean is the Linux kernel in the package titled Linux. But there are various other reasons why you might want to pick a different kernel like the Zen kernel, the LTS kernel, the Git kernel, Hardened, whatever other kernel you might want to use. For the sake of my sanity, I'm going to be using a kernel from the stable repos, something like Zen, Hardened, LTS, one of those. Basically because I don't want to wait three hours to compile the kernel and I can't guarantee that all of the packages available in the AUR are going to work. I'll leave my video linked on the kernels available on Arch in the description down below and wherever on the screen links go nowadays. And once you've selected which kernel you want to use, let's talk about how we actually use it. First thing we need to do is actually install the kernel. Now the naming scheme between the standard repos and the AUR is shared, which does make it easier. And anything in the AUR that isn't using the correct naming scheme, look, you probably shouldn't be using anyway because it probably has other problems to begin with. So the naming scheme is Linux dash the name of the kernel. So if I want Zen, that is going to be Linux dash Zen. Let's go and install that and make sure I put my password in correctly. There we go, now it's going to go and install it, and honestly, if you're using Grub, you're pretty much done. Even with systemd boot, there's only one extra step you need to do. So with Grub, once this is installed, we need to go and regenerate our Grub config to make sure that the kernel is actually being detected. That can be done with sudo grub-mkconfig make sure you spell it correctly, dash O, and then send that to the location of your grub CFG. So that is slash boot, slash grub, slash grub dot CFG. Now, what you're going to notice is because the package manager puts the kernel in the correct location, grub finds an extra kernel, that being in my case, the Zen kernel. And it's like, um, I guess I should do something with this, and it generates the files needed to actually load from that kernel. Now, systemd boot, you will need to do this bit manually. Back when you first set up systemd boot, you would have made a loader file for your kernel. That would have been in slash boot, slash loader, slash entries, and you probably called it arch.conf, but the name doesn't actually matter as long as it's .conf. Now, what we're going to be doing is making an exact clone of this, but modifying it a bit to make it work with the new kernel. Pretty much all we need to do is modify the line that says Linux and the second line in there that says init rd. If we just go and copy the file, that's a good place to start. Just to keep it in line with what we're doing, I'm going to call it arch-zen, but the name ultimately does not really matter. Pretty much all we need to modify is firstly the title. You don't want it to be the exact same title as the other thing in your list. I'm going to call it Arch Linux Zen. Then we need to modify the Linux lines. So this is going to depend on what kernel you're using. But for the Zen kernel, it is VM Linux dash Linux dash Zen. Then for the init RD line, that is going to be init RAM FS dash Linux dash Zen .img. It's probably going to be the same thing for LTS, but LTS instead, and Harden for the Harden kernel, but be sure to check with the kernel you're actually using. And then once that's done, there's no extra command you need to run. Just go and save the file. And then you can go and do a reboot, and everything should be working. Inside your system boot list, the option is going to be there. And assuming we didn't make a mistake, as you can see, Zen is now there. If we select that, it should now just go and boot into the Zen kernel. Everything is good. And just to be extra sure, inside my TTY here, as we can see, it says 5.15.2-Zen1-1-Z... I don't know why it's named like that, but it's very clearly the Zen kernel. There are other things you can do with systemd boot if you want to check out the documentation, but for now, that's all we need. Technically, you can uninstall the original kernel you're using and just rely on that new kernel. I would... Highly, highly suggest against doing that. Unless your storage is extremely limited or you don't want to spend an extra minute or two while actually updating your system, do not do that. Because if something goes wrong with that new kernel, you sort of want to have that fallback with the main stable kernel, which should always be working.
And this is especially true if you've compiled your own kernel or got something from the AUR. I cannot guarantee that those are always going to be working, especially if you're doing it yourself. I don't know how good you are at compiling a kernel, you might have just completely broke something. Now while you're technically done, I would not recommend stopping there. So do you use the NVIDIA drivers? Do you need Optimus support? Do you use VirtualBox? Do you use V4L? Do you use anything that needs an external kernel module? So these external kernel modules are loaded through a system called DKMS or Dynamic Kernel Module Support. These are for any modules not shipped inside the kernel source tree. Now, unless the new kernel you're using actually comes with one of those modules, which in some cases it might, for example with Zen, that has a bunch of extra things not in the stable source tree, you may run into some problems. In some cases, apps might be completely broken. What you need to do instead is make sure you install the Linux kernel headers. This is basically an API for modules outside of the kernel tree to actually call against to interact with all of the fun kernel stuff. So you probably already have a headers package installed, that being Linux-headers. But the Linux headers you use, because all of these kernels are going to be different in various different ways, need to be the headers made specifically for that kernel. The typical naming scheme, even in the AUR, is Linux-kernel-name-headers. So in the case of Linux Zen, that would be Linux-zen-headers. And this, assuming I put my password incorrect, should give us exactly what we want. So in the case of the hardened kernel, that would be Linux-hardened-headers. In the LTS kernel, that would be Linux-LTS-headers, so on and so forth. Now, any kernel modules you were using with the previous kernel, you might notice they're still no longer working. So that's because the new kernel does not know those modules actually exist, and they only exist in reference to the previous kernel you're using, probably the stable kernel. So to address that, in my case, I'm using V3L2 Loopback DKMS and VirtualBox Host DKMS. I just reinstall them and then let the package manager put them in the places they need to be. Even though we got Grub set up earlier to work with other kernels, it's still not set up perfectly to work with other kernels. One of the problems it has is when you open up Grub, it's going to say Arch Linux, everything else. There's just like an option there to open up a sub menu that shows you all of the other options. That's really annoying to work with. So let's actually go and fix that. So the first thing I'd recommend doing, obviously after you go into your grub config, is go and disable an option in here called grub underscore disable underscore sub menu, setting this to Y. Why is it set to Y and not yes? I don't know. That's what the grub devs decided to do. Also go and set grub default equal to saved. What this is going to do is grub is going to default to picking the last saved option. But this by itself actually isn't going to do anything because grub actually doesn't save any options. What you need to do is go and add another option that is going to be grub underscore save default, setting this to true inside of quote marks. And then it's actually going to save the option. And every time you reopen grub, whatever the last thing you selected was, is going to be the default option. In my case, that's stable right now. But while I was testing out Zen, that would have been Zen. And then once you've saved that, you need to go and regenerate the grub config again using the exact same command we used earlier. Honestly, I probably should have only done this once, but if anyone stopped at that initial point in the video because they didn't really care about the rest, then they would have missed it. So either way, the config is now generated and the sub menu is going to be shown properly and all of your new kernels are now there. At the end of the day, using the standard kernel is going to get you through your day with the exception of really weird hardware that doesn't work properly with it. I know there are some laptops out there that definitely have that problem, but for most people using desktop systems, it, it doesn't matter. But if you want to go and explore some of the other kernels out there, it is kind of fun. It is kind of fun to see, hey, is this kernel actually useful or is this just like marketing hype telling you, oh, this kernel's great. Speaking of that, I do have some stuff planned about the Zen kernel. Um, whenever I get around to doing my dedicated Zen video, yeah, I've got some things to say about Zen.
So that's going to be pretty much it for me. If you found this video useful and you want to go and support my channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribers only bear pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me. This video took like two hours to record. And... I'm out.